subscribe my channel hit the bell icon so that you are notified every time i post a new lesson welcome to another session of the excretory system today we are going to learn about how the kidneys are controlled so kidneys are controlled by hormonal systems so the hormones which are in included in the renal control are anti diuretic hormone and aldosterone renin angiotensin that is the raw system and natriuretic factor which is present in the heart region so kidney is under the control of brain and the heart in osmoregulation is the main function of the kidney so what is meant by osmoregulation so osmoregulation is nothing but the maintenance the quantity of water with the dissolved solutes in our body is known as osmoregulation so kidneys one of the function of the kidney is osmoregulation besides the excreting the nitrogenous waste material so whenever the solutes increases the osmolarity of the fluid increases so what when water is less in the blood then the osmolarity increases that is the solute concentration increases this solute increased solute concentration is detected by the osmose receptors which are present at the hypothalamus of the brain region so immediately the osmose receptors uh, stimulate the pituitary gland to secrete the hormone which is known as adh or anti diuretic hormone or vasopressin hormone this hormone act on the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct of the nephron so a and adh will be released from the pituitary gland it uh, stimulates four functions so the first function is it increases the thirst so urge to drink water is known as a thirst so first it increases the thirst because the water is low in our body fluids we have to increase the water level so we have to drink the water so first it increases the thirst and then it in, in inhibits the sweating so we lost water through sweating also that's why it inhibits or close down the sweating and then it goes to the kidneys so how in the kidneys it acts so in the kidneys anti diuretic hormone act by two different mechanisms so the first pathway it act on the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct of the kidney and it increases the reabsorption of water so more water is reabsorbed into the blood so whenever the fluid volume increases it stops the diuresis so what is meant by diuresis the loss of water in the urine is known as diuresis so as the water is reabsorbed into collecting duct and the distal convoluted tubule so more and more water is reabsorbed so it fluid volume increases and it stops the diuresis and as the fluid volume increases so this goes to the brain region along with the blood and it suppresses the osmoreceptors so whenever the osmoreceptors are suppressed they stop stimulating the pituitary gland to release adh hormone so the the water balance is maintained in the second part so vasopressin adh is also known as vasopressin so it constricts the blood vessels as the blood vessels are constricted so their uh, diameter is decreased uh, so blood pressure increases when blood pressure increases automatically in the glomerular the glomerular blood flow and glomerular filtration rate uh, which is 125 ml per minute will be increased so these three are increased uh, when adh is high in amount so automatically reabsorption of more water from the dct and collecting duct occurs uh, and the same procedure uh, continues like this the adh will control the diuresis if adh is not secreted in adequate quantities 
or ADH receptors are not functioning, then it leads to a disorder known as diabetes insipidus, which is having the characters of diuresis, means excess loss of water through urine and excessive thirst to compensate that loss. One, ha one should drink more water. So, like this, the brain controls the kidney. Hope you understand. In the next class, we will learn the raw system.